Thailand kickboxing is probably hitting towards a, a peak at the moment. It's crescendoing, definitely. But right now, we've got some of the best kickboxing talent in the world, I think, in Australia. The likes of Sam Greco, yeah! Ian Jacobs, yeah! Paul Briggs, yeah! Anthony Vella, yeah! uh, Stan the Man Longanides, yeah! yeah! Gurkhan Ozkan. The Crown Casino is home for the big kickboxing events in Australia. It's a controversial but immensely popular sport. Tarak Soleh is the biggest promoter. His shows are said to have the best fights and the most controversy. A crowd of 3,000 recently saw him stop a world title fight. What's happening? It's pandemonium! And declare his fighter the winner. Well, Oscar doesn't want to take this fight on this with this type of victory because it is a very hollow victory in my opinion, Michael. I think you'd have to agree. And when the crowd disapproved... If you want to hear what I've got to say, you better shut up. Or go, go home. All right, show's finished. Go home. The audience is human beings just like myself, where we all can do mistakes. And our audience... Generally, 90-95% uh, of them are very nice, very well-educated, very well-mannered, uh, perfect audience. But we do sometimes have the odd 2, 5 or 10% that comes in deliberately to uh, muck up an atmosphere. And when this happens, sometimes I uh, do uh, have the... Uh, well, I feel I have the authority, because it's my promotions, to get in the ring and tell the people that doesn't want to behave that they can go home. Good gun! Hey! Win the round. Solak is always ringside, advising and encouraging his stable of fighters from the Braveheart Academy. You won, mate. You won. You won. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hey, put your hands up. Put your hands up, brother. You won. His promotions have been the most imaginative. He's got the money, he's got the pool, he's got the determination, the imagination, and that sort of business cunning to be able to pull in the top international fighters and to match make the top Australian fighters like no one has before. Eric Solak presents K1 Oceania 2000. King of Kings? You can call it King of Kings, I've got no problems with that. Hours before the show, every Oceania. detail of the night is mapped out by Solak. And Tonight, there's a hitch. The from the One of the main fighters has hepatitis B. Is he going for test now? Uh, somebody just told me at 3 o'clock today that he's got hepatitis B, so I've sent him for a second test. What do you do today? He's sick of blood because comes here with hepatitis B. He's the only one that didn't sign the contract deliberately until now. He still hasn't signed it. The contract says if you've got any kind of problems with your blood, you've got to pay back three times the purse that you promised. In one of the dressing rooms, Solak tells the fighter he's barred from competing. Mate, if he damages the building, I'll shoot him. No, I'll shoot okay. him too. Because he's starting to throw things around. Here's the second result. Well, there's the second result. Okay. I want that Two hours before showtime, and a replacement fighter has to be found. Solak is offering $10,000 to any volunteer. The other fighters okay, will so be paid their normal fee with a bonus $1,000 for every knockout. I'll see you later, all right? You won't be seeing me before the show, so good luck to all of you. Outside, a fighter who at first rejected the 10,000 has had a change of mind. Now, I had a $10,000. If he said yes, I was going to pay 10,000 bucks. I won. Why did you say no to me? Just 10 seconds. I say no. I say, you go through me. And don't take it off. What's it do? Take a fight. Get in your mouth guard. I want to fight. They have to approve so we'll get out of the police. You want to take it? Mate, get out of here, would you? I said get out of here. What do you mean get out of here? Rocky, what do you want, mate? I'm in a bad mood. There's, there's people yeah. take, taking me on. You want to argue with no, me? No, I'm not arguing. Oh, get out of here. Jimmy's got no balls. He, you know, Rocky's not Can you just switch that off, mate? You definitely have to be tough mentally. That's, that's one thing, definitely, because um, 
there's there's always something that goes wrong in every promotion, and uh, sometimes you've got a few things that goes wrong in promotion, and you've got to be tough enough to control um, the fighters when when it gets to a situation where there's a, there's a tricky situation where they don't want to listen to uh, the next advice. Solak has found a replacement fighter, but a disagreement with the martial arts board hasn't been resolved. No, I'm not too busy. He knows how I think, and he just thinks that he's too smart sometimes. But every time he thinks he's smart, he becomes stupid. If you want, we can go and ask him now. Hello, how are you? How are you? We can go and ask him now, and he's going to straight away say no. And I know that. And I don't like hearing no, so but I don't ask him. You, you want to see if I'm right or wrong? Let's go and ask him, just to prove your point. Come on. Let's see who knows these people better. I, um, I'm actually hands-on with nearly, I can probably say everything on the night, um, only because I'm responsible for everything, and if something did go wrong, I'm the first person to blame, uh, regardless if it wasn't something that I, I uh, was handling on the night. But uh, it does make sense to me that I should be responsible because everybody that, that does work on the night does work for me on the night. So uh, in... On a long term, yes, I am the boss on the night, so I've got to make sure that every department, every section is doing their work right. And if a customer, for one tiny little reason, is uncomfortable on the night, well, it's my job to make sure that the customer gets comfortable. Tarak himself is a bit of a, a one-man show. He's, he's larger than life. He's the king of promoting. He's something straight out of a Scorsese movie. He's a character. And I think people like that. It's, it's, it's not only about sport. But these days, it's more and more about sports entertainment. And I think that's what Solak, Tarek Solak, gives the people. It's not just throwing two fighters in a ring, letting them fight and letting them walk back out. It's the whole parade, the whole show, the whole glamour of the event. And to have Tarek sometimes step into the ring, fly over the top ropes, call off a fight, argue with the referee, argue with the officials, and to see him actually in the ring pulling the strings, it's, it's something which the crowd sort of sit there and they get that whole entertainment package out of it. But at the same time, that's Tarek's job as well. And that's why he's the number one promoter in Australia. There's no better ring sport promoter than Tarek Solak. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. By the end of the night, Solak also hopes to be celebrating the conclusion of a deal to bring the prestigious K1 tournament to Australia. A contract could be worth millions. Well, the K1 is basically the Grand Prix of kickboxing. It's um, 27 million viewers on uh, through Fuji TV, Japanese TV, in, in the Asian region, and uh, 70,000 people ringside. So it's really something like, a, I suppose, a, a footy final, uh, a tennis grand slam. That's the, really the type of magnitude we're talking here. Finally, the show goes without a hitch, although Solak's main fighter, Gurkan Ozkan, is badly injured. Oh, the inside leg kick! But the inside leg kick sends Oscar down. It's trouble time for Oscar. Oscar's claiming. Oscar's claiming he's got a bit of a bit of a problem in the knee department. Oh no! The volunteer fighter Fadi Hadara worked hard for his ten thousand dollars. Here comes the Fadi Hadara. Fadi Hadara. He wants to put him away. Can he do it inside the final thirty seconds? He lasted the distance and won over the crowd, but not the judges. Your winner from the red corner, Ron Sifu. Solak announces he has won the K1 deal. The Japanese officials praising his promotion as one of the best they've seen. So we're talking about from $100,000, $200,000 shows to one and a half to two, two and a half million dollar promotions here. It's another boost to the growing popularity of kickboxing in Australia. The hype around the shows is drawing sellout crowds to the hard hitting all action nights. It's all over! That's it. It's good night, Irene! A knockout victory in the first round!